I'm Scott Almore. It's the 18th of January, 2024. This is my vlog of daily life living in Leon, Nicaragua. Today I had a lot of errands to run and just a lot going on. This whole week has been pretty crazy. So I happened to get uh, an errand that I had to run and a little bit of free time with the camera. So I'm going out and doing today's show while I can. I'm actually in one of my absolute favorite parts of all of Leon. I hesitate to even put this on the show because I like this area so much and I, I want to save it for myself, but I'm here in Fundesi. I have shown this area on the show before, but it's been at least a year, maybe a year and a half, I would say. And uh, this area is so cool. It is where the barrio meets gentrification, where new construction and old projects, and it's just, it's so uniquely Nicaraguan and interesting and, and not Nicaraguan all at the same time. It's such a great spot. We're going to walk around that and we're going to talk today about the importance of embracing Nicaragua for your own happiness when you're an expat moving here. We're going to get to that right after the bump. I'm here on this big square in Fundesi. I'm going to turn the camera around because this gives us kind of a marker as to where we are. Now, I've shown this before, but the last time I was here, I don't believe they had a sign, so we couldn't figure out what this building was. Uh, and this is the Hostel San Antonio, which I've seen online, so they definitely have an online presence. Uh, but they have this beautiful location in this super cool barrio in just the most interesting neighborhood you could possibly imagine. And, and the light is great for some things and bad for others. So I apologize for what the light is going to be like today, but we're going to do our best. Uh, with what we have. The sun is getting low and I've got these great things I want to show you. So this is the Hostel San Antonio behind me. Uh, these great flowers, beautiful buildings. Everything in this neighborhood is the coolest structures and buildings and and cool, really winding streets. Everything is pavers. It's, it's absolutely fantastic. And uh, so much of it is older buildings, um, but tons of it has been uh, completely revamped. So you find just the most interesting stuff. It's not modern, it's not old, it's just, it's very, very different. And much of it is cottage core, which is really cool. And there are empty lots. I have no idea why there would be an empty lot here. At some point, I'd really like to get that hostel to, uh, to give us a tour because it's such a cool spot. All right, so I want to turn around and show you where I'm coming from. Sorry for those of you who've seen the episodes before where I showed this, but it's such a beautiful spot. So, oh, we're gonna wait for him. All right, so we have this plaza behind me and you'll notice the wide boulevards, lots of space for parking, driving around, big intersections, and this is part of the old projects of the city. Now there are some winding streets that go between things and that's where we're gonna be heading down to explore a bit. And it's very, very bright right now because it is sunset. So uh, it's, it's a little bit tough um, to film because I'm going in and out of shadows and everything, but what a gorgeous area. It's so quiet, uh, but there's so many people out on the street. This is a neighborhood that has really become um, a big one for like people are out with kids and strollers and stuff and walking around and there are sidewalks uh, and, and like it's, you can tell what it used to be and you can tell where it's going and it's in a transition phase and it's such a cool part of the city and there's so much opportunity here i'm really excited to see where this goes over time and uh it's certainly just one of the most interesting parts of the city and it's in such a great location within the city that it's so well connected to other things it's very close to it's it's the neighborhood uh that touches ruben dario park that we show all the time uh and and like every single house in this neighborhood uh at least in this little bit of it that i'm in is so interesting walking through these streets is is just so different than anywhere else in the city partially because there's so many trees uh, but also the way that they they lay out the way that the buildings are against the road uh it's just it's all so completely different than anything you're going to see anywhere else um and, and as far as i've seen in all of nicaragua and certainly different than leon and anything in this region but we're not here today to talk about this cool part of fundesi as much as i liked hola <laughs> as much as I like talking about Fundesi, this is a very cool area. Uh, we gotta get past this music here. As much as I enjoy talking about Fundesi and I could talk about how cool this area is for quite a bit of time, and I'd love to walk around and show it all to you and see how it changes over time. What I wanted to talk about today is, <laughs> is embracing Nicaragua, and we talk about this a lot, So, but 
but specifically in the context of so many people, I think, look and evaluate Nicaragua in a context of wanting to recreate, and I'll use America as the example because that's where I'm from, but uh, it could be America, it could be Canada, it could be wherever you're coming from, Brazil, and saying, well, I want to go to Nicaragua for whatever things I like about Nicaragua, or whatever reason I need to be there. Maybe you are, are looking to uh, marry, so you did marry someone from there, or you uh, really want the cost advantages, or you found that perfect home, or you have a business reason, or whatever, but you have a reason that you need to be in Nicaragua, and the reason is not because you're super ultra interested in in the Nicaraguan lifestyle not that you're opposed to it just that that's not the thing drawing you here uh, it's something else and then when you do so and you want to do a comparison well how am I gonna like Nicaragua how is it gonna work for me and the comparison um, often becomes well if I want to recreate my life from we'll use the US if I want to create my American life here uh, what is that going to cost? How hard is that going to be? How do I do it? And so forth. And, and it's not that that is wrong, right? I don't want to make that implication. Of course, that's okay if that's the thing that is a priority to you. But it is important to understand that anytime you're moving between countries, uh, you tend to, in one country, and this is just, you know, wherever you're coming from, you tend to have a, a strong, well, this is what life is like. This is what I did. This is how I did things. This is what I enjoyed. This is what I'm used to. This is how, what I think is nice. And then you want to copy that or, or something analogous to it in the new place that you're headed to. And of course, that's natural. And we all want to do that. And when we uh, experience large groups of immigrants in most countries, um, we find that those groups tend to bring a lot of things with them to the new place uh, as a group. And and so it's no, it's, this is just common the world over. Uh, and, and of course, you know, if you grow up in, in New York, like I did, there's a lot of, well, there's a lot of Italian food. Well, why is that? Well, because lots of people immigrated from Italy at some point, and they said, well, the food here isn't what we want. We want the food from Italy. And they modified it a little bit, but they brought a whole bunch of food from Italy. So you expect this to happen anywhere, and it's not a bad thing. But it is very important, uh, I think, for most people, at, at least to at least to have an understanding of what it is you're asking of yourself, of the uh, country you're moving to, of the environment around you, that the, the things that make sense, the things that were good, the reasons that you wanted to be in whatever country you're from, or the reason that you like being from there, not necessarily that you chose to be there in the first place, uh, it may be just the place you were born, but those things are, um, are done the way that they're done there because of whatever conditions they have there. So coming from the United States, well, we build uh, houses out of very uh, flimsy material because our expectation is we're going to tear them down and build new ones. We all have this strong desire for new houses all the time. That's a normal thing in America. And so we build to accommodate that. Uh, and, and because of our weather, it, it, a lot of things make sense. There's just a lot of things we do. We have lots of open space, so that makes us do certain things. And we can grow tomatoes really easily, so that makes us do other things. And we have apples, so we, we make a lot of apple pie, right? And like we say, as American as apple pie, and we mean it because America grows a lot of apples. That's why we eat so much apple pie. I mean, apples are delicious, but that's, that's why that's the particular delicious fruit that we use in such abundance. If you were to move, for example, to Nicaragua, and you say, well, I just really love apple pie, and I want to have apple pie just as good as I had in America, and that's my priority. There's nothing wrong with that. Obviously, there's no ethical debate over should you have apple pie? Yeah, fine, if that's, if that's what you want to pay for. But you really have to understand that uh, apples are not widely available here. I mean, there's certainly you can go to the grocery store and get them, but they are not grown in country. They're imported. The variety of apples available is way lower than in the US. The quality of the apples is gonna be lower. The price is gonna be higher. The number of places that know how to make an apple pie are few and far between. I mean, very, very few and very far between. And all of these things, right, are like that. It's, it's not just apple pie, it's all the foods. It's the way you build houses. It's the types of restaurants you go to. It's the type of shopping you do. It's not that one place is good and one place is bad. It's that each place has chosen a different mix of things and styles and, and the way that you park your car, the way that you drive, the type of car you drive, the terrain you drive on, how far things are apart from each other, the way parking lots are laid out, the way the roads are designed, and on and on and on. 
for the most part. In some cases, it's just cultural and sometimes it's random, but in a great number of cases, the reason that the things are the way that they are is because they make sense in different places. The United States has loads of big, broad, high-speed roads because it has loads of open space between things. They gotta move people ad hoc over great distances. That's, that's a very difficult challenge. So roads are the answer to that. And Nicaragua does not have that challenge. Nicaragua has very small spaces with short distances and not a huge variety of cities, so they don't have to branch off in as many places. So a few really good smaller, slower roads makes more sense. And if you come to this with the American mentality, you say, well, these roads are not up to my standards. I, I need to drive faster and whatever. And if you do the opposite, if you come from Nicaragua, you go to America, and you bring that same mentality, you're like, these distances are ridiculously far. I, don't, I won't travel that far to get places. And obviously you need to adapt or you're going to be unhappy, right? And, and not everyone can adapt, but knowing that that's the reason you need to adapt is because there are different places. And the thing that makes America great, right? Isn't that it's able to recreate a Nicaraguan lifestyle well. And the thing that makes Nicaragua great isn't that it can recreate an American lifestyle well. It's that they each have completely unique lifestyles and beyond isolated factors. You are generally going to be taking them as a whole rather than taking them as isolated bits. And of course it's tempting to look at isolated bits because we present it that way, right? We say, well, Nicaragua is so much cheaper than the United States. Look at the cost of living difference and, and people go, well, therefore Nicaragua is better. And in, in my estimation, Nicaragua is better. That's why I moved here. Right? I wouldn't have moved here if I thought it was worse. But it's important to understand that you can't look at the cost of living as a sole factor unless it is the only factor that matters to you, right? If you're so strapped that the only option is to find the cheapest possible place to live, well, then Nicaragua may win because the one factor that matters to you is one that Nicaragua wins at but, but by a lot. But, but in general, for most people, it, it's, a, it's a much more holistic thing and you have to... Uh, really appreciate that part of getting the maximum benefit of the place you're moving to and imagine this in reverse and, and people you hear people say this in America well if only people would learn the language if only people would you know adapt culturally right and and it's hard in reverse and then you start to understand why they the immigrants in America struggle right you move to a new country and you're like but I liked this thing we did in the old country, but I liked my lifestyle with this. I just, I just want it to cost less. And sure, I want a few things in the new country, but I tend to want to pick and choose them. And I want them in isolation. I want them uh, occasionally. And I don't want it to be that everything in my life changes. And that's understandable. And, and I totally appreciate that. And there's nothing wrong with that. But it's important to really understand when you're evaluating yourself and what it is you want and what you're looking for and what you'll be happy with is to look at a country and, and the US and Nicaragua are just great examples because uh, because my audience, right, to have a tendency to come from the US or Canada and have a tendency to be interested in Nicaragua. But this is universally true that you really need to think about how much you're looking, and this is just, it's just a scale for you, right? No rights or wrongs. How much you want to use the new country to, to attempt to recreate the old one and then consider things like how much can you do that? How much can you afford? How much will it cost? Right, so there are, because there will be penalties or else the other country would have done that already probably. And then you, on the other side, you need to say, how much do you want to embrace and become part of, of the new culture? And for some people, right, I, I think the thing that's important to understand is people who are on this side of the spectrum always struggle moving to a new country because those things are hard, right? It is very difficult unless you are just absolutely crazy rich to to bring your everything to a new place right if if you're coming from i grew up in western new york i want to bring a buffalo lifestyle and bring that to nicaragua i have a, a lot of challenges and and, a, and I, st I still can't bring the weather right i can't bring the four seasons i can't bring the cold weather i can't bring the giant waterfall I can't bring the proximity to Canada. There's all these things that are just off the table to bring. And then say, okay, I want to build a, a Buffalo style house and I want to have it in a Buffalo style 
development and I want to have a Buffalo style yard and I want to have uh, food that, that we would have in Western New York. I want all this pizza, which of course we have here, but it's not the same. And I want these subs, which we don't have here and they would not be the same. I just want the, you know, even getting the same tomatoes and, and apples and lettuce could be a massive challenge. You may be at a point where you're starting your own farm or starting your own importer, depending on how much you want to recreate. We're talking really hard here. It's sound simple. Well, okay, so you want tomatoes, you just put up with a slightly different tomato. Maybe that's okay for you, but I bet you'll be disappointed. The tomatoes are very different. The lettuce is very different. And and the people here will be like, well, if I go to America, I don't like their, their tomatoes, right? And the Americans come here and go, this isn't a tomato, whatever. But it's it's, these kinds of things, this trying to recreate small food items, and then you have to recreate the restaurants or the, or the menus, or can you bake bread that is the same as you're used to? Pizza is a big challenge. There's no way to get New York style cheese here in Nicaragua. It's just not possible. And there's no way to do it fresh. All those restaurants in New York, they're doing fresh cheese. Here, if you want American cheese, you gotta freeze it and fly it in. Obviously, it can't be fresh. The water, if you talk to those pizza places, those really amazing pizza places in Western New York, I'm not talking New York City where they'll just make anything and make it thin and, and make it expensive and, and sell it to you in the middle of the night when you're drunk and you don't realize that it's not world-class pizza, it's just okay. It's okay. But when you're in Western New York and you're in the heart of, of hardcore pizza country, where they laugh at Italy for not taking food seriously. <laughs> it's kind of true. Uh, they talk about how it's the water in Western New York that makes such a difference. They have New York cheese, New York water, and everything is balanced because of that. And if they don't have access to Western New York water supplies, they feel they can't recreate those pizzas. And whether that's true or not, that's a whole level of things that recreating somewhere else can be nearly insurmountable and yes if you're if you're bill gates if you're warren buffett and you're visiting another country and you want to fly in water from buffalo of course you can but there are a lot of challenges and everything at, even though, even if you're them it takes physical time to get that food here it takes the, the chances that it won't arrive as fresh that it will uh go missing that you'll have to order another whatever right it's it's impossible to 100 percent recreate and and generally what you want to recreate ends up being far more than just is what within the confines of your yard right or the confines of the restaurants that you eat at it's going to end up including wanting to have uh neighbors of a certain style neighborhoods of a certain style the local bar in you know the the, the working class steel town bar that's just a few blocks away where you can sit and have a beer and and talk about the day and everyone speaks English and everyone speaks in your accent and all those are things you essentially can't recreate at any cost and of course people don't expect to recreate that necessarily or they don't consciously want to recreate that but I think for a lot of people subconsciously that they're kind of expecting to, to try to do something like that and of course we find far more of that in enclaves you go down to San Juan del Sur you find the developments where it's all you know Americans that are all together to some degree, they're attempting to recreate home in who their neighbors are, what language people speak, the style of the houses, at least a little bit, right? But in those cases, I think the majority of those people are very much honest about it, right? Not that they're being dishonest in other cases. I'm saying that they're very open, that they're, that they're saying, well, I want an enclave and I want a development and I want to be around other expats because I don't want to be alone. I don't want to give up everything I'm used to. I don't want to you name the thing. And they're open about it because they're in those places, right? But if you come out here to Leon, for example, and try to do those same things, have those feelings, I have, a, I have a feeling that there tends to be a lot a tendency to be a lot more people hiding it from themselves, probably, but, but from everyone that, no, no, I want to be Nicaraguan. Oh, but man, I miss. And, and it starts, it starts coming. Right now we all do. Everyone misses things, everyone. But of course I miss things from places that I've not lived as well. Right, I miss driving through through Sarajevo. I've never lived there, but I've been through it and I miss it. It's beautiful, right? I, the walks along the lake in in Hallstatt, Austria. Never lived there, but I've done that walk along the lake and I miss it. So you'll miss things that aren't necessarily where you're from. That goes without saying. But a lot of these concepts are you have these things that you're looking to recreate or wishing you could recreate or evaluating based on not being able to recreate. And it, and it's very true that if you really miss that pizza, that sub shop, that Friday night fish fry with a double baked potato, 
that you can only get in Western New York. And sure, I know people in Pennsylvania say that they do. They don't. It's not the same. Don't say it. But they do better coleslaw than us. I'll give them that. Iron City Light and some coleslaw on a Salmon Rachel at a bar downtown in, uh, in, 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 you know, Oakland or whatever. Like, I get it. It's amazing. Different, but it's amazing. They don't have our pizza, though. And so, you know, you, you, you wish you had these things, and it's fine to want to have them. It's great to want to have them. It's great to have these wonderful memories of things that you love, and maybe you can make it at home, or maybe you can find a way to isolatedly recreate little things that you really miss. I would really like Friday night fish fries, just like back home, and I don't know why we, we can't. We can't get cod, that's part of the reason. But we can do, we do things like it. But understanding in yourself, right? Accepting, evaluating, looking at yourself and saying, okay, Scott, don't call yourself that if that's not your name. If you're Scott, you can call, just use your own name. Say, okay, Scott, you want these things, those aren't here. How are you going to deal with that? Are these things that are meaningful and you should recreate? Or are they things that you liked, but you don't like that much and just give it up because the rest of your life doesn't, doesn't need that? Is it something that you know other people that you should all get together and recreate? And that would be like, maybe you open a restaurant or you start a dinner club where you every Friday night do traditional Western New York fish fries and double baked potatoes and don't let anyone who isn't from Western New York cook because they'll never get it right, right? And, and maybe that's what you do. Or do you say, okay, this is, this is what my Friday night tradition was and I can keep it as a wonderful memory. And when I go back home to visit, I will, I will make sure I get that fish fry and I will take pictures and I will linger over it and I might order two and, and that's what I'm gonna do and it's gonna be wonderful. And I'll just have it as this really special thing every so often. I'm making myself sad, I miss, miss, I miss my fish fries. And some of my favorite memories are, you know, I'm sure every is a very strong word, but every Friday night uh, we would go out as a family. I was an only child, so my, my parents and I would go out off into Sunny's in Batavia, New York, uh, which was it kind of, it felt like it was in the basement. I don't think it actually was, but it was like on the back side of the mall. It's a tiny city, so the mall was itty bitty. And we would go and, and, and you'd sit in this dark lounge. Like looking back, it was such a funny place and mirrors on the walls. The place looked like a strip club, but it was a, it was a family restaurant in the eighties. And it was these dark booths and, and it was called Sunny's Lounge, and it was next to the, behind the J.C. Penney's in the little tiny mall, the Genesee Country Village Mall, something like Genesee Country Mall, that's probably it. And uh, what a funny thing, and I loved going there. The food was excellent, and that is, that is my Friday night as a kid. And now the, the Wyoming Inn in Wyoming, New York, which is very close, uh, is the place to go for that. If you happen to be in Western New York and you're looking for the best fish fry around, you, uh, you can't go wrong there. Literally, they've won awards for the best fish fry, and it's hardcore, right? Um, but see it matters to me i am a person who once drove 48 hours to get shrimp at ray's in rye harbor new hampshire so i take these things very seriously do you do you find a way or do, or do you do you look around and say okay that was my friday what's my new friday and and now it seems like my new friday is via via and live music and, and yeah, we get a lot of French fries. It's not the same. <laughs> I prefer, I miss the fish. It used to be this quiet Western New York, completely different thing. And now it's loud and party and beer and, and French fries. And it's, it's absolutely different, but I also love it. And it's part of embracing this new me because this is my new place. And of course I've been here for years now, but it, it's finding how to make this your own wherever you are wherever you want to go but i don't know how quite to say this right like it's i'm trying to i'm trying to reach inside there is there is this need to decide that what you want to do is embrace a new place or accept that you're trying to change a new place into being a lot like an old place and if you're going to do that all the other things go out the window right so so for example if you want nicaragua to behave just like the united states it is going to cost so much money not because nicaragua is more expensive it is not it is that to do things that are not native to nicaragua become expensive you have to import it no one knows how to do it it's, it's crazy but the same happens in reverse if you are coming from nicaragua and you're like i want this exact lifestyle but i want to pay a little bit more and do it in the united states you can't 
you have to pay so much more. Recreating a Nicaraguan lifestyle in the United States is astronomically expensive. It's pretty expensive recreating an American one in Nicaragua, but the reverse is mind blowing. You can't even begin to do it. It's the little things like, oh, I hired someone to fix this thing. I have this staff that does this. I'm able to go out and drink these beers and eat this food, go out to eat a lot. Wow, suddenly in the United States, you're talking hundreds or more of thousands of dollars a year to maintain what you didn't even think about as a lifestyle in Nicaragua. And of course it goes that you go to the United States and you go to a bar and you get some fancy cocktails. And you're like, ah, how expensive can it be to recreate a handful of fancy cocktails in Nicaragua? Look, it's going to cost more. I know it's not going to be a big deal. It's going to be a big deal. You could be looking at many thousands of dollars to import alcohol that doesn't exist here. I know that sounds like, you know, well, who would actually do that? You don't know cocktails if you don't realize that we would do that. Those of us who love cocktails, we will go out of our minds trying to figure out how to do this. And the answer here is I can't do that. There's a whole bunch of amazing cocktail culture I can't recreate here. And it makes me very sad. Luckily, Costa Rica has some amazing cocktail lounges. Guatemala has some. I'm sure El Salvador does. I haven't, I haven't explored some of the closer ones, but they, they do exist, but I have to go really far. And that makes me sad. I wish we had more here. We have some, a little bit. It's starting. I know, and before someone says there's a new place in Managua, which I need to look up the name. I should have it off the top of my head. Like there's some, but their range of alcohol, even the best places, they just don't come close to what even the neighboring countries have because we just don't have the supply here. And, and little things like, well, you know, we have, we have bitters. Yes, we have Angostura bitters. But when I go to the United States to an average bar, they're going to have four or five bitters. If I go to a fancy bar, they're going to have 20 or 50, right? Like just, just the bitters. Right before we talk about all the different types of whiskey here, you can't get bourbon at the average bar. And by average, I mean, I think there is no bar in Leon that serves whiskey. Uh, sorry, that serves bourbon. They do serve whiskey. They serve scotch. They serve uh, Lincolnshire. Ugh. They serve Irish whiskey sometimes. There's something. But bourbon or anything like bourbon, a Canadian rye? Nope, you can't get it. I don't know of a single bar that serves it. I have some in my house. It's not 100% unavailable, but it is extremely hard. So I guarantee in Managua, someone has it in a bar. But here in Leon, I think the answer is no one. I'm going to try to change that. But it's, it's like draft beer, right? How many places have beer on draft in Leon? To the best of my knowledge, two places. One on the beach and one in the city. In the city, it's a brew pub. It's Cerro Negro and it's their own beer on their own taps. So there's one place that brews their own and has taps. And there is one place on the beach, Desperados, that has more potente on taps. So they bring it in like a normal place that serves beer with taps. That is, I am pretty confident, the only two restaurants with draft beer or siphon, as it's called here, in all of Leon and its surrounding cities. That's unbelievable that that's how hard it is to get draft beer. And that's something that is made in country. We're not importing any of that, probably the taps, but that's just the equipment, the actual beer and the, the kegs are filled here, right in Managua. That's so crazy that it's so hard to find even things that are made domestically. So those are things you have to adapt to. Oh, well here people drink bottles, not draft. Does that matter to you? For a lot of people, it doesn't matter at all. Some people wouldn't even notice. Some people it's a showstopper. Right now you can get draft, like I said, but you've got to hunt it down. So come out to the beach, enjoy some draft and watch a sunset. Uh, but the the idea that that to really get the value of any place, if you were to move back to America, I don't care where you're going, New York City, Los Angeles, Miami, Chicago, farmhouse in Iowa, doesn't matter. In order to get the value, the real value of where you're going, you have to embrace it. If you want to take a Nicaraguan lifestyle, a South African lifestyle, a Chinese lifestyle, whatever. China's way too big of a place to have a lifestyle, a downtown Shanghai lifestyle, and put that in any of those places in, in the United States. Could you? Is it wrong to want to do that? No, that's fine. But are you going to get value out of it? No, you're going to be fighting uphill. You're going to be struggling really hard, and you're not going to be very happy with the results. You're not going to have the food, the weather, the culture, the neighbors, the surroundings of the place that makes all those things come together. To get the value out of wherever you move to, you have to embrace it and live the lifestyle of the place you move to. And to some degree, you want to say as much as possible. Again, it's not wrong to want to do the other thing. It's just 
when it comes to the value and to the most happy situation that you're going to have is when you're able to say, I really want to be a part of this place. I really want to integrate and embrace. Maybe not fully integrate, maybe not have people mistake me for a local. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that where you're able to go to the bar and have a conversation, where you're welcome at all the places that locals are welcome, that you know the places only locals know, that you don't go to tourist locations any more than anyone else, maybe just a little bit more, but you see them as tourists like anyone else would, that you do, the, you shop in the places that people shop, that you do the activities that people do. And of course, people do different activities here, right? There, there's not one set of things that Nicaraguans do. There doesn't need to be one set of things that you do, but you, you need to consider doing those things in the confines of how Nicaragua does it and accept and be happy with the limitations that that brings. Same moving to America. Well, I just can't get squeaky cheese as we call it for breakfast in America. Nope, you can't. Really hard to get, right? Like it just is. Here, squeaky cheese is everywhere. It has a real name, I don't know what it is, but it squeaks when you chew it. And uh, uh, you know, by realizing that, well, Nicaraguan breakfasts, and sure, maybe you don't like plantains. Great, get a Nicaraguan breakfast without the plantains. Just like when I'm in America, I get the American breakfast without the bacon. I don't eat bacon, right? So I'm already adapting a little bit when I'm in America, always did, right? So the same thing, you hear you adapt a little bit to make it yours, but go for how Nicaraguans eat, go for how they go out, how they enjoy. If you can't say, those are things I'm going to enjoy, or I think I'm going to enjoy. If you if you look at it and say, no, 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 I, I, I that's not going to be for me. I need, to recreate what I'm leaving behind. Not in like adapting, but I really want to, to bring as much of it as possible. I'm looking to not give up those things I have. I think you want to look really carefully and say, do I actually want to move to a new place? Because the chances of your success get really low. If you have outrageous amounts of money and you know how much it's gonna to take to recreate and you're willing to do that by all means. But if you are a normal person and you are looking to move to a place, any place, and you're saying, how do I bring what I miss with me on, on a large scale? Not like, well, you know, I'm gonna miss this one video game, they don't sell it in the country, I'm gonna smoke, like, okay. But when you're talking about like a lifestyle, well, I always wanna play video games, I always wanna have the latest equipment, and I need it at the local store on the day that it releases. Well, guess what, you're not gonna get that here, right? Overall, I love playing video games in Nicaragua. I find that the lower cost of everything, the more tranquil lifestyle, all that stuff, it makes for a better video gaming lifestyle for me and my kids overall. Sure, there's some negatives, but the positives are, are outweigh them, but we have to embrace them. And one of the things that I really love about my kids is they're so good at being like, whoa, okay, we, we know we want this latest game, but it's not on sale yet. Let's wait for a great sale. They have this very logical approach to these things. So where a lot of people get emotionally sucked in, well, I know it'll cost half as much in six months, but I can't wait six months, I gotta get it now. Well, that doubles the cost of your gaming. Sure, you get things a little bit earlier, but there's so many games, just play a different game, right? Find a, there's a way to mitigate this. You will always have to pay that premium because you can't wait. My kids are so good at waiting. They're just like, no, we'll wait till it's cheap. Let's play something else. And they're like that with everything. So when we're like, oh, we can't have as good a TV or as big a TV or whatever, they're like, oh, well, okay, but we get this other thing for that. So that makes sense. Right, and we get we get to have a dedicated game room that we couldn't afford to have a dedicated game room in the U.S. So we get a better room here, but not as good of a TV, or we have to wait longer to get an upgraded graphics card because they're just harder to get. We got to pay more and ship it, whatever. That stuff they're able to logic through, and are you able to logic through? Not for video games, you know, for whatever, for all the things in your life. Are you able to say, oh, I can't get my favorite beer? We'll say it's Coors. I bet it's not, but let's just say it is. You're like, I just want a Coors. Are you gonna be like, I have to import it. I have to find a way to get it. I, I'm gonna be upset every day that I don't have a course. Or are you going to have a Tonya and then try a Victoria and then and then try a Maestro and then and then try a Moro Potente and then try a Cerro Negro and find something from Nicaragua that maybe isn't course. I guarantee it's not, but you find something that's relatively close or makes you just as happy or makes you nearly as happy. And, and you say, oh, this, this is my beer now. It's gonna cost less, I bet. It's gonna be local. And you're gonna be able to, you know, cheers with all the people, salute, and you're gonna be like, okay, this is my beer now. And you can tell the people who come here and are like, oh, another one of the same beer. And the people who are like, Tonya, let's go out for Tonya's, right? Same beer we've had 
every day for years. We still want another one because we're embracing it or because we like Tonya, right? You have to evaluate how you're going to fit into that and how you're going to be able to make yourself fit into that. If you can't adapt, if you have to be a part, if you cannot, I'm not saying immediately, right? As you, if you can't have a process of becoming a part of the place, then the chances that you're going to be really happy anywhere that you move to long term is low. And if you look at it and go, I don't know everything about the lifestyle, but what I see looks good. I don't, I don't feel it yet, but I think I can. And I'm gonna work really hard at being a part of the place. And I'm gonna figure out what that means for me. And you know, it's, it's a process, but I'm gonna do it. Like I'm excited to explore a new culture and become part of that new culture and, and really see myself as a part of a place or embracing the enclave. My GoPro overheated, so I am attempting to handhold the Sony, which was in my pocket all the time, and do a little vlogging from that. You can see this equipment cooling down in the background. It is a gorgeous afternoon here. So in, in the, the spirit of embracing things in Nicaragua, and this is kind of what got me thinking along some of these lines today, and I apologize for the audio. This is the Sony audio, which I just, I'm just not loving. I need something, but the image is incredible, but I don't know how shaky it is. So feedback, please. Um, and of course, get down there and leave your comments and stuff about everything, questions, all that stuff. You know, I love having all that. We made a whole video yesterday about how you can leave a video comment. Do that. I'm looking forward to those. And if you are so affluent that you would do this, go buy a Sony ZV-1 just like this, or 1F is perfect for this, a little bit cheaper, and uh, make your videos that way. You could participate all the time. That'd be amazing. Valentina actually did that. I just can't get her to make the videos. I digress. So I was out. I needed to do a little bit of basic shopping today. So one of the things that I'm doing that I'm unwilling to, to completely adapt on is a lack of certain things. And I mentioned the tomato thing. That's one. I want to grow our own tomatoes in our own way and deal with some of the we don't like the tomatoes here. Like, like simple solutions, right? But in doing so, I need to do a number of things. And some of those things, got the trucks coming by there, is we need to, uh, I need to get soil. I need to get pots to put them in. I already have seeds and stuff. That's not a problem. We already have oregano growing in our garden where we got a few things going on, but we want to really up that game and have a variety of things. We're not ready for tomatoes yet, but I'm trying to get like sage, uh, marjoram, thyme, that kind of stuff. Things we use all the time, having fresh would be great. Um, so I'm going to play around with it. I'll, I'll take you guys along on the journey as we do it. Uh, but so to, to be able to do that, we went out today and went and, and did uh, shopping in the market. Well, the first thing is, where do you go to find pots for plants? Um, now, if I was driving all over the country, I know exactly where to go, but I'm not. I'm trying to do it here in Leon. I don't have a clue where to go. So we had to ask uh, uh, our, our housekeeper and she gave us some very vague directions, but it kind of got us somewhere. So we went to one market and this is the big outdoor market. Like it's, it's really tough to deal with. So we drove around, talked to some people and they're like, no, you need to go to the, the station market down by San Juan. And we're like, okay. So that's a whole bunch of driving around the city, like an hour of driving through really tough streets and stuff. And the whole time I'm like, oh, you know, when Paul drives around here, he's so stressed out because he can't, the whole like people in the road, everything's slow, it, it's, it's too much. And I'm like, you know, I have to, I have to stop and think. One, I have to be like, tranquilo, Scott, it's just, this is how it is. You're not gonna make it better by being upset about it. And it's, this is what you signed up for, right? This is what driving and everything is like here make the best of it. And, and I'm able to be pretty happy as a driver getting around Nicaragua because I'm able to have this, like, this is part of the experience. This is part of the thing. Everything's slow. In the U.S., the distance is far, but we move fast here. The distance is short, but we move slow. It's a trade-off. This is what we have. You have to, you have to be zen, right? So I'm tranquilo. And, and like, cool. So the, the driving wasn't bad, but I have to kind of think this through sometimes. And, uh, and, and going to the markets is kind of nuts. Everybody comes up and yells at you, especially when you're Chile. And, uh, uh, you know, we fight our way through the market. We have to ask everyone. And actually, I'm the one who's like, you know what? I think I know where there might be. And I, took, and I found a garden place in the crazy market at San Juan. And they didn't have pots, but they did have soil. So we bought that. And they are like, oh, we buy our pots over here. So we went into a place that we would never have found on our own. Managed to buy pots. It was all super cheap, of course. Then we got uh, stopped and got some French fries because we hadn't eaten. And uh, it all went really well. And in reality, I actually enjoy doing this, um, but it's tough in the, my schedule is so hard to, to be able to do those things. So it's very tough to be able to do this stuff, but I like being able to do it. And um, overall, the experience is great. And I like, I, I got to film only a few minutes for you guys, 
but it was the whole thing was like, you know, this is so different than my experience um, back in America, my, so far from any of my experiences prior to being here, that it's very difficult um, to do anything but just either be frustrated and fight it and be like, this is not how we shop. This is not how we find things. This is not how we drive. Or you can be like, all right, I don't know how this works, but I got to figure it out because I live here and this is my culture now. And, and okay, this is the market. This is how it works. This is how people do it. Okay, this was really cheap. It really wasn't that hard. It was kind of fun because it was an adventure. Think of it that way. Like it's a whole different thing. Can you do that? Can you embrace that for most things? Something's always going to frustrate you too much. I get it. Same thing in America. Something will always frustrate you. But can you embrace wherever it is you're going to be? That's what you need to answer for yourself. So either you need to understand that you're you're looking to not embrace. You're going to have this uphill struggle. You have to accept that this is who you are. You have to accept that these things are going to be hard and expensive. And that is just what it is. And you're choosing an expensive way to do the thing you're already doing. Or you need to understand that you need to embrace the culture and that you this is what you've accepted you're going to do. And then you have to figure out how to do that and internalize that that what you're doing is getting excited about the new place and making those changes and actively make those changes. And in some ways we talk about some things that are really obvious. Learning Spanish is a great example for Nicaragua, right? You're not going to be able to truly embrace it the way that you would hope if you have not learned Spanish. I have people who have come to check out the filming of the show. And then it's all about figuring out what you need to do. How do you get excited about learning Spanish? How do you get excited about what foods locally are going to make you happy? And of course, you can always have these exceptions. Well, I still want this thing. For us, it's grilled salmon much of the time and homemade pizza. There's a few things that we go out of our way to recreate to some degree what we used to have because it, it keeps us from missing things too much. Of course, everyone's always going to do that. And even if you grew up in America, you're going to sometimes order food from some place that you've never been connected with simply because you like the food. Absolutely fine. And all kinds of activities. You can go do karaoke even if you're not from Southeast Asia or from East Asia. But, you know, these are things that we adapt culturally. So that's, that's, that's all fine. But you want to start figuring out how to get the attitude of embracing the new place. You have to internalize, I'm going to become a local if that's the path you decide to go and then really make it happen. And when you're driving and it's also frustrating, tranquilo, porque it's, it's just not something you need to worry about. You just wait a little bit longer in traffic. Oh, it's so frustrating how to deal with the whatever. Oh, you know what? There's a million things you'd be frustrated with in the United States. Just, it's different things. Embrace where you are, get the maximum advantage because everything is tuned for those things. People understand everything works because it works for people every day. When you are able to do that and do do that, that's gonna maximize the potential value of any place you're gonna move to. And when you fight against it, it's going to minimize the potential value. And again, Nothing wrong with wanting to be an enclave. Nothing wrong with wanting to be in Nicaragua as a country, but bring as much America as you can to your little bubble of existence. That is absolutely fine. But those people generally understand, especially when they go to that extreme, that that's what they're doing and that they're going to pay at an insane premium, in most cases, to make that true or it's gonna have such extreme limitations, like their bubble is very small. Whereas if you move to Leon, you embrace the culture, you become part of the city, you don't have a bubble, or your bubble is the whole country. And then it's a very different thing, and you have this huge world to explore all the time. And that's all part of your cultural existence. So that is a decision only you can make, only you know what is right for you, only you know what is gonna make you happy, only you know is an option for you. But being conscious, about it, making it a very uh, deterministic situation where you're going to say, I need to figure out this about myself. I haven't thought about it before, so let me think about it. Ooh, I'm going to fall to this side or this side. What do I need to do to make myself happy? On this side, I have to realize, okay, I'm not embracing, so therefore everything's going to be a cost premium because I'm, I'm brute forcing something that is not natural, and I may give up many to just about all advantages of the place that I'm moving to in order to do this thing that I want and or I want to go this way. Okay, I need to understand that to do this effectively, I can't act this way much, a little bit here and there, without really undermining this value I'm trying to get from it. And by making that conscious decision, then you can tell yourself, oh, 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 
wow, I suddenly feel like it's expensive. It's not expensive, I'm expensive. That's okay, I'm premium, as we call it, right? You're, <laughs> we call them Managua premium when they're Nicaraguans who are premium. If you're coming here and doing it, you're like gringo premium, it's like a whole new premium. But you're being premium, that's fine. But you can't think that the country's expensive. You can't think that it's hard to do things here. It's not, in general, some things are. But it's the trying to do something that is very difficult to do here or impossible to do here and doing it anyway, right? Or on this side, you have to say, okay, I'm gonna get all these advantages, but how do I get those advantages? By being tranquilo, by being part of the culture, by accepting that this is how it's done here, so I have to do it that way. And when I don't, I have to understand that I'm the exception and, and okay, now it's gonna be harder because I'm the exception and that's okay too. Thanks for joining me, like, and subscribe. If you'd like to support the channel, we would love that support. It makes a huge difference for us. You can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. That comes directly to me. It's like Patreon and helps fund all the work that we do here. As always, I would really appreciate it if you watched another episode, hit that like button, subscribe to one of my other channels that help show Nicaragua or one that just shows random places. I've general travel stuff as well. If you could share on social media like Reddit or Facebook or LinkedIn, whatever, let people know, tell a friend or family member about the show, get someone in, watch an extra episode, even if you're not paying attention, all those views really help us out. That would all be great. I will see all of you tomorrow.